Hi friends, welcome to my channel. My name is Anandita and the name of my channel is Beauty and Lifestyle by Anandita. So if you're new to my channel, please like, share and subscribe to my channel and watch my video till the end. I'm sure that you will get some positive vibes, some kind of um, good things to know. Today is Sunday and on Sundays I generally talk about things which are uh, not directly related to your beauty, your skincare. I generally talk about a few things which will motivate you or I also give you tips about how you can uh, improve your way of talking to people in English. Especially when you are in office, especially when you are appearing for an interview. So. Today I'll talk about few things which are pretty much known to all of us. However, we tend to make a mistake and that's just out of confusion, nothing else. It's not because we do not know or um, circumstances or something else. It's just because out of con confusion, we kind of tend to make mistakes in few very common things. I will just do my best to make you understand. I'll just do my best to take up the confusion from you. Uh, in this video and let's see so today I'll talk about the five things which we are taught in our schools number one it has to be always uh, like someone and I it cannot be someone and me for an example we cannot say Claudia or rather we can say like this Claudia and I went to market with Annie but we should not say Claudia and me went to the market with Annie. So I mean the same thing, but the first sentence is correct where I'm saying Claudia and I. But the second sentence where I'm saying Claudia and me is grammatically incorrect. It means the same. However, the native speakers of English speak this way and since we just want to be like them. We want to talk like them. It's always the best to follow few grammatical structures in order to be flawless, fluent, and of course, confident. Now, the same thing can be told in another way as well. Like Annie went to the market with I and Claudia. In another way, Annie went to the market with me and Claudia. Now, in the second set of sentences, the second one is actually correct. So when I'm saying Annie went to the market with me and Claudia, it's correct. But if I say Annie went to the market with I and Claudia, here it's incorrect. I'll explain why. See, when you are framing a sentence, you have to understand where I is a preposition and where I is a subject. Okay. When I is been used as a preposition, you have to say I. Otherwise, you can say me. But again, guys, lots of practice and you have to be very careful. You always have to think and talk unless you start thinking in English. That's a little difficult. With practice, it will come. Okay, it's not impossible though. However, always remember the thumb rule, subject and I. It can never be like, or rather, I would rephrase. It's someone and I. It can never be someone and me. This applies in 90% of the sentences. So, even if you do not want to get into the you know, thinking process, the whether it's a subject or it's a pronoun. Don't worry about that. In 90% uh, sentences, you can just close your eyes and say that someone and I formula. You will be correct for sure. We were also taught in our schools that we should never ever end a sentence with a preposition, right? However, there are uh, some phrases, the phrasal verbs, where you have to end a sentence with a preposition. Otherwise, the meaning will change. For an example, keep up, run down, get up, put on. So if we use these words or these phrases in a sentence, 
we have to use them the way they are. If I say that, I, th I think you should get up. So I have to say get up, right? So here the sentence is being ended with a preposition and it's absolutely correct. I hope you can come over, right? So come over is our phrase and I have to say come over, otherwise the meaning will change. I can also say I have put on, which means that I have gained weight, right? That's a very common thing. We always say that I have put on, I have gained weight. So you have to say put on, you cannot actually break it or you cannot really even think of um, this rule that a sentence cannot be ended with a preposition. If it is a phrase for phrasal verbs, you have to end the sentence with a preposition, as I said, otherwise the meaning will completely change. So that was my rule number two. A very common thing that you should always start a sentence as there are when you're talking about something plural and you should always say there is when you're talking about something singular. That's the thumb rule. However, there is an exception. Now let's talk about that. There is a number of cakes. There is a number of cakes in the shop. I'm talking about cakes. I'm not talking about just one piece of cake. But still I'm saying there is a number of cakes. And this is absolutely correct. Or I can also say that um, there is a cat, two dogs, two birds in his house. Here again, I'm talking about many things. One cat, two dogs, two birds. However, when I'm starting my sentence, I'm saying there is a cat, two dogs, two birds in his house. This is also correct because when I'm framing a sentence like this, I should always focus on the first subject. Okay, the first letter or the first word, not letter, I'm sorry, the first word. When I'm saying one cat, then cat is the subject to which I should pay attention. So if I say there are a cat, two dogs, two birds, it's incorrect. If I have to say there are, then the sentence can be there are dogs, cat and two birds. That way I can change my sentence. However, when I'm saying one cat and then dogs, birds, whatever, I have to say a uh, because I am focusing on cat. Similarly, when I was talking about the cakes, there is a number. Okay, so here um, definitely I'm focusing on the cakes. However, I am talking about the cakes as one bunch, as one form of food. I hope I'm making sense. You understand this, right? So when I'm saying there is a number of cakes, then I am talking about all the cakes as a bunch, as a unit. So here also I'm correct when I'm saying there is a number of cakes. I can say there are cakes, okay? But if I'm saying things like there is a bunch of cakes or biscuits or there is a number of cakes, biscuit, toffees, whatever, then I have to say there is a. Even if I'm talking about a plural subject, but still considering the structure of the sentence, it has to be is a, not are. These are the things which should come into your mind automatically. If you think a little bit before you talk, you will be able to avoid making silly mistakes. Today's rule number four, guys. Now, in a sentence, if you move an adverb just like that, 
that can actually change the meaning of the sentence completely so whenever you are talking to someone be very careful about the adverbs if i say i am going to really hug him when i see him it means i'm really going to hug him after i see him but if i say i'm going to hug him really when i see him it does not imply the same meaning right so put your adverbs correctly your adverb can actually change the meaning of your sentence this was my rule number 4 put your adverbs in correct position that will actually um put emphasize on the correct part of the sentence a very common mistake guys it's not even a mistake anymore see we often say back of this back of that uh like back of the table i kept this back of the table uh two weeks back you know what i mean right this is a very common practice if you look at the indian english news channels if you look at the indian english uh, tv series or whatever this is a very common thing that almost everyone talk about back back is this guys this part so if you talk about time like two weeks back it's actually incorrect it has to be two weeks ago back is something uh, we talk about only when you say something you know something um, an object or a human or an animal if you can see this then you say back however if you talk about time like weeks like months year you should better say ago not back back is incorrect in that case always say two years ago two months ago couple of weeks ago few hours ago do not say back um english is such a language guys it's not only spoken in australia or america or uh, britain anymore english is our language in be it in india or like in any other country we always talk in english and even in india if you go to the eastern parts if you go to the northern parts or southern parts then also you see the nature of speaking in english is actually different from each other however few things are very basic and i would really request you all to keep these things in mind when you talk this will not only make you a good flawless speaker but it will also make you a stylish speaker which is very important nowadays everyone speaks in english so it's very important to know what you're talking about bit of grammar pronunciation if you just make the small corrections know that will definitely add to your confidence and fluency so guys with that i'll end today's video if this has been helpful don't forget to hit the bell icon you will get my videos you will get the notifications rather of my upcoming videos and also hit the subscribe button if you really like my video if this has been helpful and you can also share my videos with your friends and family members thank you once again guys for watching i'll see you in my next video till then you take care bye bye